So I'll present Marilena, who's here with us. She is an accomplished cross-functional international leader with a track record of success in marketing, finance, and operation. With a passion for developing people, she has helped individuals and team, teams sorry, achieve their full potential through mentoring and coaching. Throughout her career, Marilena has worked with C-level and senior leadership across a variety of organizations, bringing a unique perspective and deep, deep expertise to every project she leads. Her ability to build relationships and communicate effectively across culture has been a key asset in her success. In her free time, Marilena volunteers as a mentor for, for small business owners in South Florida through SCORE Broward. She is particularly passionate about helping leaders build self-awareness and develop their leadership skills to progress their careers and become better leaders for their teams. Originally from Venezuela, Marilena has lived and worked in Caracas, Madrid, and New York before settling in South Florida with her husband. Her international experience has shaped her approach to leadership, emphasizing the importance of empathy, communication, and, an, and a global perspective. Um, presenting with Marilena, Maria, after a career in fashion and after setting up a travel company in Italy in 2000, 2007, Maria started coaching in 2019. She is currently working for Boone Health Company, holistic personalized coaching platform that empowers employees to become more resilient, productive, and engaged. She is a certified professional co-active coach, ACC and CPCC, trained through the Co-Active Training Institute, widely recognized by ICF as the most rigorous professional coach training and certification program in the industry. Member of Outreach Committee for ICF South Florida chapter member, a uh, member at HCN nonprofit organization. Maria grew up in Italy and relocated to, U to the US in 2018. She has lived and worked in Milan, Rome, and London. Married, she has four children and currently lives in Miami. Welcome to both of you and thank you for doing this presentation. Thank you, Nada. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Okay, Maria, go ahead, roll okay. it out. <laughs> okay, so I we kindly ask you to introduce briefly yourself, just saying your name, where you live, and what are you curious about. Um, talking about myself, so my name is Maria, as you can hear, and um, as you can realize, I'm Italian with a strong American accent. <laughs> Uh, I live in Miami, and today I'm curious to know what you're going to walk away with. Okay, so I'm going to be calling each of you, so prepare what you are curious about. I am Marilena, I live in Pembroke Pines, and today I am curious about hearing from you what in what situations do you discuss with your clients' purpose. I'm going to start calling people, and the first one I'm going to call is Nada. Nada. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm Nada, I live in Miami. I'm originally from France and Lebanon. And today I'm curious about your presentation, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I ha I'm gonna start calling people, here is in alphabetical order for me. So Adriana Bottiglieri, Adriana? Yes, hello, thank you for this place. place. Um, my name is Adriana Botiglietti. I live in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm absolutely curious because the same as Marilena said, when you ask coachee about the purpose, they don't know how to explain and how to help them to, to design the, in words. That's great. Great to hear. We are all curious about that, and Adriana. Angie. <laughs> Angie. Hi. 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 <laughs> um, uh, my name is Angie Holleran, and I am actually a staff member of ICF Global, and I'm located in Richmond, Kentucky, which is just south of the Global Headquarters office. 
And being an empty nester, I've been asking myself a lot here lately, what is my purpose? Because my kids are gone. Uh, but I want to see how I can build that also into my coaching sessions with my clients. That's awesome. Connie. Me. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Connie German and I uh, live in Miami, Florida. I am retired after 33 year career. So I'm working on my coaching business and I'm always looking for extra tools. And I'm a big believer in individuals knowing what their purpose is. And I believe by knowing what your purpose is, you can achieve the happiness in life that you're looking for. Thanks Thank for you. Sharing. Thank you for sharing. Uh -huh. You're welcome. <laughs> Jillian. Good afternoon. I am Jillian. I am South African and I live in Miami. And today I'm curious about purpose and, and is it really just one thing that everyone has a has a purpose or is it can we have multiple purposes we are we are going to talk about that during our discussion today thank you for sharing isa or isa okay guys speed it up jimmy <laughs> uh hello there marilena and maria and everyone else um my name is Jimmy Glenos. I live in the beautiful little town of Stewart, which is north, uh, about an hour north of West Palm Beach. And I am curious about, I'm always curious about trying to find my purpose because I just kind of like wing around and surf around and do whatever feels right. And um, I think being a little bit more purposeful would be helpful. So show me how to find that, please. Oh, well, we will try. <laughs> I'm going to call a couple more people because we are getting more, much, many more people than what we are, we're expecting. But anyway, so we want to keep this rolling. So I'm going to ask Samina. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. I'm joining from uh, Montreal, Canada. Um, and uh, yeah, um, today I'm curious about purpose. I know I, I've met uh, Maria before. And I saw her name. I said, yes, I need to jump on this. But that was one reason. <laughs> the other reason, of course, the, the topic. Purpose, yeah. I am a strong believer in purpose, life purpose. And I, I find, I, I think I have, I know what it is for me. But when I come across a client and then she says, I don't know, you know, I'm doing all of this stuff and what is my purpose? I don't know how to kind of guide them and, you know, bring them to find their purpose. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you. That's great. I'm going to call the last person. I'm sorry that we can't uh, cover all, but we have to keep this rolling. Rosario. Hi, my name is Rosario. Um, I live in Miami as well. And um, the, uh, today I'm curious about purpose. I mean, I think it's a very big word and I'm an endless seeker of my own purpose so that I can help others, you know, reach their own purpose. So very excited about your presentation guys well thank you so much so well let's get started now so maria is going to cover uh, the next one so we are we are going to try to define a little bit purpose and we have we found a lot of literature about that we are going to talk about a little bit about the myths around purpose because as you said it's a big world and, and sometimes we get you know paralyzed by the world then we're going to talk a little bit in, in our experience, how we can help our clients, but we really value the group discussion. We're going to leave some space at the end because we also want you guys to help us, uh, you know, shape this and uh, build this community and, and, you know, share experiences that you may have uh, with, with us and with all the older group here. So let, that, let me turn this over to Maria. Maria. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marilena. Uh, just a quick thank you to everybody, and in particular to the ICF South Florida to organize these amazing events full of a, a webinar all the day, every day. So thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. So imagine a drug that was proven to add years to your life, reduce risk of heart attack or stroke, help you to relax during the day, 
to sleep better, to have a better sex, and uh, a, um, a drug that can uh, double the chance to stay drug and alcohol free after a, a treatment, and uh, a drug that can activate your uh, uh, natural killer cells and increase your good cholesterol. The pharmaceutical company would be worth billion, and the founder of this company would receive a Nobel Prize. But it's not a drug, it's free and it's purpose. So what is the definition of purpose? The one that I, you can find many definitions of purpose in many books, but the one that is very close to my heart was the live your life intentionally with the values, principle and aliveness. And so we can talk about purpose and see so many nuances about it. But the first person that really started to talk about this concept was Aristotle 2003 years ago. He posed this big philosophical question. Happiness is the meaning and the purpose of life. The whole aim and the, hand, and the end of human existence. So purpose, we, we talk every day about purpose, but it's quite funny that I found this number quite curious. 25% of adult American don't have a clear idea about what is their purpose. And they, they struggle to answer questions like, what make me get out each day from my bed? What matter most in my life? Does my life has a clear direction? So purpose, having a purpose can really transform our lives. A, it's a manifestation of uh, values, interests, and people devote more efforts having a purpose to important goals and activities. So purpose is having a purpose is really the foundation that allows us to take risk, to explore, and to find and create meaning. So purpose is not something that you find like an objective, it's a subjective experience. And why is so important? If we think about uh, successful people, leaders, they have a clear idea about what is their purpose and what they, the contribution that they want to make in the society or in, your, in their life or the, their career. And uh, so meaning is what matters most, but purpose is how you act to fulfill it. So talking about um, successful people, Steve Jobs said once, if you want to have a higher performance, you need to start and begin with a higher purpose. And um, I have uh, two examples that came up to my mind. One is Agassi. Agassi started to be a champion when he was 26, very old in his career. Even he started so young to play tennis, but he started to play tennis uh, every day, like a killing, I don't know how many balls, but for just for the desire of his their father. So he realized at 26 years old that his purpose was not to play tennis, not to be a good tennis player, but to be a good tennis player, to give joy to the people that were watching him. And I think it's a beautiful thing because he realized quite late. And so his purpose was really make people happy, happy and have fun. And somebody else, like, uh, for example, uh, Schulz, the um, uh, founder of Starbucks, he didn't start the company to make coffee. He started the company because he wanted to have a successful company in order to give health care to all the employees. Because during his childhood, uh, her, uh, his father was struggling to, to give her, you know, a good health care to the family. So this was his purpose. And then there are many other examples, like Nike. Nike purpose when the founder found the, the, the company was empower individuals. So the first step is the discovery, recognize it, identify your purpose. But this is a constant uh, uh, reflection uh, process that again touch question like we should ask ourselves every day, who I am, what, I, what role I want to play in the society, who I, gonna, I want to be, which direction I want to take. So. For some people, it's not even, um, it's not something that you attain, it's really a lifestyle. 
to live in a way that our actions are in line with purpose. So purpose, having a purpose can give you energy, positive energy with power. What is the positive energy? Positive energy is any kind of energy that you can get for a good presentation, like hopefully today, you're gonna get some positive energy or walk in a nice uh, uh, context in nature. And uh, willpower is a kind of muscle that can be stretched and can be fueled. These two can bring five uh, positive lifestyle elements, like uh, lifestyle practices. And there is a reciprocal relationship between energy and willpower and these five elements. And so it's a kind of dynamic process. Why I mentioned these uh, uh, elements, uh, these, the, these kind of uh, life practices? Even though we know that sleep can give you energy and can be engaging, but really a lot of uh, um, uh, studies prove that sleep can really be the major factor of health. Presence. Presence is the be present in any moment. And uh, what can help to be present? Things like yoga, meditation, uh, mindfulness. This can really create uh, energy and induce stress. It's a three discipline that you have to cultivate. Activity, activity, we know how it's, how it's much important to have any kind of activity to increase your reserve of energy. Creativity, creativity uh, is very important and we should also remember every day to our children to have more creativity instead to be bombarding with stimulation from uh, uh, technology. Creativity is something that uh, really can give you more energy and can uh, help to express your emotions, the vital emotions, and can improve or to reduce uh, stress, fatigue, and pain. Eating, we know the importance of eating, eating well. By eating well, eating the right food like low glycemic food can all uh, really maintain energy and willpower. So we can, we can go to the next slide. And just to summarize, purpose, the benefits of purpose are, can summarize in three big uh, um, concepts. The well-being that I mentioned in the beginning, that is also, um, well-being, not just uh, um, in respect of diseases, but also having more positivity, uh, be less somatic, uh, reduce defensiveness to change. Um, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, feeling less somatic and have more positives in general. What is I found very curious is socially. How is it important to find a purpose? Because if you have a purpose, people tend to see you like a leader and to attract, to be attracted from you because you have a stronger personal appeal. And so you can also from there, then you can have also better interpersonal relationship and deeper and broader social network. So you really can give energy to people around you. And finally, on work, what does it mean to have purpose in work? Can help you to be more engaged, productive, to be to have more um, clarity in front of you, to uh, help uh, with prior to prioritize. But the curious thing is, in particular, during the post career, is having a purpose can give you the new direction and keep you motivated with a sense of satisfaction. So the downside of lack of purpose are like languages, uncertainties, confusion, tedious uh, routine, and it's often linked to isolation and loneliness. And this has been proven, something that is, has been proven researchers. Thank you, Marilena. <laughs> Sorry, I rushed you. <laughs> no, don't worry, because I know that we don't have a lot of time. And we have also yeah, so well, we wanted to talk a little bit when we were preparing this, one of the things that we, we noticed is, and one of you said that, and it, it was exactly our reaction, purpose is a big word. And sometimes it, there are some myths around purpose, and this is not a comprehensive list, but at least there are the ones that we found more common. 
Uh, the first one is that there is only one true purpose. And re reality is that you can have purpose in different aspects of your life. And it's not necessarily you have a unique purpose that guides your personal relations, your job, or you know, your different aspects of your life or your social life. Uh, it could be you could have multiple purposes that are informing uh, different aspects of your life. The second one is that purpose is predetermined. Somehow, you know, the stars define, you know, if you look at your, <laughs> at, at, you know, the planets that were in the sky when you were born, you have a purpose uh, that that is a purpose that you just need to find it. And then, you know, uh, but it's predetermined uh, for you. And, and reality is that purpose is something that is, you know, it, you, you can pursue and at some point of your life, you pursue one thing and then you can pursue another thing is, is, you know, is something that you can find along your life and can evolve, uh, uh, quite frankly. And the other one is that purpose is only found in a job or a career. And this is also a, a big myth because uh, you can find purpose, you know, in, you know, a volunteer activity. You can find your purpose in, uh, you know, in your uh, per, uh, personal life and in your family life or in your social life. It's not just related to a job or a career. And the last one is uh, once once you find it, that's it. You are done. Check mark, right? So you you found your purpose and you you did your homework. But but as I said before, what happens is that your purpose change as you change, as you age, as you are facing different uh, aspects of your life, you, you can have different purposes. For me, for example, when I was recently graduated, you know, I was very much focused on my job and finding my purpose around uh, my job. Then I had my, my children. So, and that really changed the balance uh, for me. And then, you know, the, my purpose was more uh, prioritizing family and, and raising my children. And in, then I focused more, you know, career when they grew up. And then, you know, right now I am an empty nester <laughs> as well as some of other participants here. And then, you know, my purpose uh, has been evolving. And, you know, is, is that curiosity of, you know, finding your purpose and evolving it as you are in different stages of your life, what, you know, keeps you alive and, and aligned with your, with your values. So, and the big question is, how can we help our clients? And we were reflecting a lot about this because not necessarily the clients come to you, oh, in this session today, I want to define my purpose with you. <laughs> we wish that it was that way, right? It's not that simple. So we, we put together a, a few client scenarios, but at the end of the presentation today, we want really to dedicate more time to this, to hear from you what other situations you see. This is what Maria and I came up with uh, based on our experience and the typical scenarios where you can, not even mentioning the word purpose, because for some people that could be um, uh, intimidating to say, oh, let's go and discuss your purpose about you know, <laughs> your life. So it, it's really something that comes naturally when clients are in these different situations. One is career transitions. When a client is considering a, a, a career change and uh, you know they are trying to see what are the major things that they want to do or different things that they want to do. Life transitions, like in the example that I was giving about myself, major life events like you know being a parent or getting married or retirement. So these this, uh, major events in your life they, you know, somehow move your floor and it makes you think or makes you reflect about what is your, your purpose uh, in this new stage of your life. Burn out or dissatisfaction, you could be in a path that, you know, you keep doing and, you know, you keep that inertia uh, uh, doing the same thing, but you don't feel satisfied. And uh, once you identify that, you know, the discussion of purpose is very relevant with our clients. And the other one is the lack of direction or focus when a client is feeling directionless or lacks focus on their life. And basically they don't have a, a, a North Star or where they are going, um, what, what they can do about it. 
one thing that we we also discuss is that you know for for there are different paths to find for purpose that can be different, very different for uh, different people. One is more the proactive path that is more about you know uh, internally you have an interest you pursue that interest in the in the example of Agassi that uh, Maria was giving before was more about okay I I am an interest in tennis. Uh, but you know, or I, I have, you know, I know how to play it, and then you know, Agassi found a way to do it, you know, to take him to a different level. When we found the joy of that he could bring to people, like playing tennis, that was, but it was through the pursuing an interest that he had, right? The other one is a reactive path. Uh, something happens to you. So you, you know, you re re get retired or maybe you didn't make the decision, right? So you're part of a layoff or you have a family member that you need to take care of or you become a parent. It's more a reactive path or something external that happens to you. And the, the third one is more the social learning path when you are inspired by someone and you see, oh, this person you know, it does something that I am interested in. I, for, in, in my example, I, I got inspired to do coaching when I had a friend of mine that he was doing this and he somehow inspired me to do the same, but in my way, right? So, but it was like that example that really I could see, I could taste a little bit, you know, what it, this meant for him. And then, you know, it became an interest to me. So that is more the social learning path. So how, how can we develop and cultivate a purpose? And, and here more moving to how we can help first ourselves and then also our clients is one, one key element is reflecting about values and interest and, you know, discovering those things that motivate you and things that you are curious about because you get you get good at the things that interest you, right? So it's, it's something that it, it is important to identify uh, with our clients. Exploring new experiences. If you if you feel dissatisfied and you are burnt out and you just don't do anything about it, you know, it's, you know, if you don't explore other things, you will never know what are the things that are more aligned with your values and interests. So exploring new experiences is key. And it could be that you try, you explore, and you don't like it, and that and that's fine. But you explore that and you discard that uh, thing based on your exploration. Seeking in inspirations from others. This is very much uh, the social path that I was mentioning before. Uh, and once you have an interest, you could see, okay, how how what does people do with this, <laughs> All right? And and trying to see to seek inspiration from others and. You know, healthy envy is always good to find inspiration of the things that you, oh, that you are curious about and the things that you want to pursue. Uh, identify your skills and strengths. That's also very important because that will keep you motivated. And if you are something that is aligning your skills with your value, oh, that's nirvana for people, right? So when you you can you use something that you are strong at doing and you have you are good at doing. And then you will become better and better and better because this is aligned with your values and with your interests. And last one is building a support team. And of course, uh, coaches could be a, a very much a support team for our clients, but it's not just coaches. It's also identify that people in your life that you are close to that can help you, you know, a, a, tell you sometimes what you are good at, right? So, and what are the things that you excel? And what is the joy that you bring to people? And where do you see more, you know, joyful or happy when you are doing certain things? So this support team is very important and this is, uh, could be your partner, could be your, you know, children, it could be your close friends, and, could, and of course could be also a coach, but not limited to that. And here we, uh, checking the time here, sorry about that. Uh, we, we just listed as an example because we, after this, we are gonna move to an exercise that Maria is gonna guide us through uh, about some tools and techniques that can be used, you know, for to cultivate, to develop and cultivate the purpose. 
One is visualization exercises, you know, trying to see and, and project, you know, how you see yourself in, in 10 years and trying to, you know, visualize your, yourself doing in the future. Goal setting, you know, to get to that, you know, desired future, future that is something else that can be used. Reflection, you know, to, uh, and and write write writing prompts and journaling is a, a very important uh, tool that we can use with our clients. Appreciative inquiry exercises that are very much about uh, finding the strengths that you have and uh, applying those strengths to the life situations that you have and trying to define your purpose based on your strengths and not on the things that you lack of. Uh, that's a, a technique that is very much uh, in the realm of positive psychology. And of course, the use of assessments uh, is also uh, something that you can uh, use with the clients. And we just listed a few ones here uh, that are you know, very, very well known. Uh, purpose in life, the VIA character strength survey, meaning in life questionnaire. So, but there are so many <laughs> really uh, in, in the market that we can use. We just listed here a few ones, but assessment is something that could be very much used when you are in that step of identifying values, identifying interests, and also identifying strengths. And you know, having those uh, to open the eyes of the clients and open up the discussion with the clients is is something very useful. And you know, one one thing that we uh, wanted to do today is use one of these exercises. It's not listed here, so but Maria is going to introduce this to us, and as a you know group activity that we wanted to share with all of you. So let me uh, turn this over to Maria. Thank you, Marilena. So. In order to help ourselves or, or our clients or our family member, our children to find their purpose, you can use uh, um, the Ikikai um, exercise, which is literally is the translation is the reason for being. And it's an exercise normally it takes 30 minutes. You should, you should not think too much. Today, we're gonna have probably five minutes. So we're gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be super quickly, but, uh, uh, is a is a really a process of discovery, and uh, it's not you, you don't it's not a goal you don't mm, achieve any goal but it's a process of discovery and uh, even if you're able or not able to find it today it's fine because the whole point of the exercise is to just get started. So if you have a piece of uh, paper and maybe a pen, you. We're gonna start to make for circle, but the first circle in the middle of the page is what you love. So just write down one or two things that you really love to do. What have you never gotten bored of? Uh, what's something you have always been drawn back to do over time? Or what gets you in the flow that you forget to eat and drink when you do it? And put just, just one or two. So the second circle that you can draw on the left, that should be interconnected, is what are you good at? And again, if you can write here two elements, two things. What skills have you been spending time to practice? What do people look to you for help with? Or is there anything you want to be good at, something else? And you just put there. These two circle, it's called passion. Passion is anything that you love, that you're enthusiastic about and enjoy doing. Uh, it's something that really gives you uh, yeah, enthusiasm and fulfilling, satisfaction. So, and now we're gonna draw another circle just below or what you love, and it's called uh, what you are paid to. So what have you been paid for before? Or what you would doing if you are not in your current job? What do you want to get paid for? And then you tell me if I'm Fast. Marianne, I'm going too fast. 
No, no, we still have okay. like okay. Yeah, two more minutes yeah. for the exercise and then the discussion. <laughs> So the last circle on the right is gonna be what the words need. This is a little bit overwhelming, the concept. So let's uh, just do it, quite, take, take, let's keep it simple. So how are the people like, what uh, do they need or which, or how can you contribute to create a positive effect uh, on those around you? Okay. In the middle, you should discover purpose. I mean, if you you have to now first, sorry, you have to circle one activity in each circle or underline, and see if, it, if there is a common theme among the four circle. If there is this thing, then is the purpose. And that could be anything for you. And this is, I think, is a good exercise also to do. Yeah, with children, with friends, uh, something quite uh, curious. Okay, now we can. Okay, so now we are curious. Who wants to share <laughs> the outcome of the exercise for them? It's, it's, a, it's a very fast one. Uh, we are not expecting, you know, a full exercise here, but uh, we want to hear from you about the experience. Anyone wants to share? I can share. All right, Rosario, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how to go through this, but uh, in my particular experience, um, what I love to is being with people, so connecting with people. Uh, what am I good at? I think that um, I have, uh, um, I like to listen to people's stories and to people's, uh, you know, experiences. Um, what I would like to be paid for or what is it that I'm paid for? I, my intention is helping people succeed in their lives, professionally, personally. Um, and what the world needs is a lot of empathy. So I think there is very much aligned, everything is very much aligned to what I'm kind of like the path I'm in right now. So yeah, so great exercise, thank you. No, thank, thank you for yeah. sharing, thank, thank you for sharing. We also want if, uh, you know, to, to have a, a few more minutes here. We are like eight minutes more, if nada, <laughs> allow us. <laughs> All right, to have a, a discussion and, and sharing with you so what what other client situations you you have found uh, that the purpose discussion is useful other than the ones that we listed before? What additional tools do you do you use uh, or you know things that you are curious about? Maybe we can help each other here identify other, other tools or any other experience to, to share here. Anyone? Think, okay, Samina, go ahead. I think this was a, a good, quick exercise. So earlier you said that maybe not necessarily to use the word purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And it could be a time when, uh, so for example, career change, for example. So, I mean, if somebody wants to, uh, is kind of think, I really not, not liking where I'm working. I want to switch career and everything. So we don't necessarily have to say, oh, you need to figure out your purpose in life. You know, instead of saying that. So what you are kind of suggesting is we could almost kind of do a quick exercise like this maybe, and it will um, help them to figure things out? Yeah, absolutely. That that has been in my experience. I never used it, at least me, myself. I, I, don't, I, I would like to hear from others. I feel that some sometimes that when you are, you know, bringing these big words into the discussion with the clients, the, the, there, is, is, there is so much around the world that they could feel intimidated by starting a discussion about purpose, right? But it, it could be more laterally introduced when you are, when you feel that they are in that situation that they don't have really a, a, a North Star 
or they are feeling a burnout and they are feeling that they are, you know, without direction of where to go, where to go to, that you can introduce these kind of exercises and somehow you will and that we will you will end up having a discussion about purpose without even using the word. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that because I didn't realize that because I'm always. Um, yeah, I think that's very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, Adriana. Yes. I love when Maria told about the direction. It's because it's not a goal. It's not not I need to go there. Now the idea of a direction, open you know, the, the mind to think and to think in different moments of their lives, our lives and the coachee lives. I, I, I want, for me, that was one of the clue I want to share because I used it before, the idea, and it helps, especially when the coachee is blocked and he can talk. Great. Thank you for sharing. Sueli? Hi, everybody. Um, I find that a lot of times in crucial periods of your life, loss of a parent, loss of a job, where you begin the inner reflection, you end up finding the opportunity and the purpose. So if you listen to so many tragedies and how Somebody finds a purpose in their lives to save other lives, especially with children and and mass shootings. So I find that to be um, something that reveals when you are trying to make sense of what happened in your life. Yeah, so, absolutely. These tra traumatic experiences can, you know, move move the floor for you, and and put you in a position to, to reflect and then somehow you, you find it. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? All right, so we are about the, the time to finish, Nada. <laughs> so thank you so much. I really appreciate you to, you know, the, the active participation and, and the attendance that we had today. We, we really thought that we were going to have less people, right, Maria? Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you, that. everyone. And here you will find our contact information in case that you want to, uh, you know, reach out and, and connect with us. So here you have uh, our contact information. And I think that that's all for today. So let me turn this over to Nada in case that there are some closing remarks here from ICF. Thank you very much, Marilena, and thank you, Maria. It was a very interesting presentation, really nice. Thank, thank you very much. I love the Ikigai tool. Yeah, an extra tool to use to our clients when they, I don't know what to say, you know, when they're completely black mind and, uh, or in the difficult moment, transition moment, as you are a trans uh, transition coach. Now that is, a, I think, is a very good exercise, quite powerful. So, thank, thank you, everyone. You. Yeah. yeah, and just before I use the Ikigai as well, Maria, and it has mm -hmm. a wonderful uh, results. But before we finish, before saying goodbye, don't forget we have uh, our in-person meeting tomorrow. Please, I hope to see all of you there whatever place is closer to you. We're having one meeting in Palm Beach, the other meeting in Miami Beach, and it's an opportunity to connect and discuss our futures and our purposes. <laughs> for sure. Thanks I think that Samina, your... Samina, you had another comment? <clears throat> yes, please. I just wanted to ask if um, the Ikigai, I had uh, seen that before, but is there... Um, like um like a concise i don't know like, um instructions or something to kind of fo follow that tool that we could follow that sort of, or buy get the book or instructions to kind of really use it i can send you some in if you want you can find uh, on a good back and a to rosario yes of course i will there's a book that is a bestseller that is called ikigai yeah you can also buy the book find your ikigai it's like the bestseller book uh, on Ikigai, I think. <laughs> awesome. Okay. 
Thank you all. Have a lovely afternoon and uh, see you the next day or the next presentation, the ICF uh, presentation webinar. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.